On Final Cut Grill 022 with Alex Golner, we talked a little bit about creating plugins, and I'm, I've am i always been very impressed with Alex's plugins and the way he does it. And I had mentioned to him that I had, you know, delved into creating a plugin for myself, kind of. So what I did is I downloaded um, this plugin called Luma Mask, and it's by a, a, a Dave Walsh, and you can find it on fcp.co. Now, Luma Mask is a great little plugin. Let me show you what it does. So if I step over here to Final Cut, here's me standing in front of Leo Laporte's um, uh, Twit Brick House. Now, what I let's say what I want to do is I want to take this horrible shot of me and I want to composite it over this blurry background of the inside of the studio. And what I really want to do is I want to kind of cut a box out. Now, here's what I've done. I've actually gone and created a, um, if I go uh, Luma Mask JPEG, um, a little too big. This is a just a box where I want to put myself. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that. Um, and, and again, this only has to be luminant, so it's looking for the brightness value. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my head in that white box. Okay, so this is how Luma Mask works. Now I've put this, once I've downloaded this, I've installed it. Let me see if I can open another folder here and show you real quick. In the motion templates effects, I've created a folder called free. And in there, I have put the Luma Mask download folder, which is what I downloaded from Dave Walsh. Now, that means in Final Cut, it's going to be in a folder called free. And there it is. So here's how it works. If I take this plugin and drop it onto the clip of me with a background, you see it gets all funky here because this is what it, what it's looking for is uh, the mask source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image here, I'm going to drop it into the image well, and essentially what that is going to do for me is cut a hole. All right. So basically I'm using it like a cookie cutter, and that's exactly what a Luma mask is. It's a cookie cutter. Now here is where I got to um, kind of experiment a little, and I sort of uh, you know branched out. So the way Dave Walsh's Luma mask works is it cuts a hole and as long as the stuff you want to drop in that hole fits exactly in that frame you're good to go but you see what happens here if I were to try and scale me down by going like scale what it does is it scales me and the mask and that's not what we want to do so here so all of that is by way of saying here is a way to modify a plugin. So here's Dave Walsh's Luma Mask. I take no credit for what he's done here. I don't get it. I will be the first to admit that. I'm not Dave Walsh. I'm not Alex Golner. I'm not uh, Mark Spencer. I can't, I, I don't know how to do this, but I figured this out very quickly. I right click on this and I say open in motion. So I'm taking Dave Walsh's plugin and I'm opening it in motion. Okay. Now, what do you got here? Crazy, crazy. Now, it took me a little while to figure this out. But essentially, if I twirl this little guy down and see effect source, okay? So if I select this effect source, that is what is going to pour into the drop zone, okay? The drop zone is not selected because it's not visible. It's just cutting a hole for it. So now I select the effect source and I come over here to the inspector and I go over to the properties, okay? Now the properties for the effect source in the inspector. And essentially what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to scale that shot of my head, that one, I want to scale it down and I want to be able to position it a little, all right? So what I do is I come over here to position and I click on this little pull down here and I say publish. And what it's going to do is it's going to publish the controls for position and then I'm going to do the same thing with scale. I'm going to click on this, I'm going to go publish the controls for scale. Now I could do rotation and shear and stuff. But I don't need all that. I just need position and scale. All right. Now what I do is I do a save as, and I'm going to call this Luma. Uh, I'm not going to capitalize it all. Luma mask position. Okay. And I'm going to put it in the category of free. Okay. See what that means? It's going to be right next to the other one. And now I'm going to publish that. Boom, done, simple. I can now quit motion. And when I go back to Final Cut, I just give it a second to update, click on it, look at there. Now I have my new version called Luma Mask Position. So I'm gonna click on the shot of me. I'm gonna come back over to the um, inspector here, click on Luma Mask and delete it. 
Then I'm going to take the same, uh, well, not the same, the new updated Luma mask position, drop it onto the shot of me, take the Luma mask. This, again, this is just a black and white that I made over in the Photoshop. Drag it over here, drop it in the image well. Okay. You see that? Now, watch this. This is where it gets cool. I can scale me down in the hole a little bit. See what I'm doing? Now I'm only scaling what's in the box, not the box like I was before. And then I'm gonna just push me over and align it in the thing. Okay, so doing the effect. And why, you might be saying, well, Chris, why don't you just push the image back and crop it? Why go through all of this? The reason you go through all of this is if you're doing a lot of this, it's much easier to position somebody in a hole than it is to recrop it Every time you want to say, oh, I need a little more headroom. Okay, I want more headroom. Done. Well, actually, I'm at the edge of frame. But let's say I want less headroom. See what I'm saying? Now I can push this around. Okay, so that's much. And if you're trying to make things uniform, I could have a box left and a box right. Have my two people in there and I could slide them around in there. So that is my first foray into modifying an effect for my own purpose. And I want to thank Alex Gollner for the inspiration to even think it was possible. Later, later.